Hello everybody, Dr. Carl here. In this video, we're going to talk about confidence intervals and what they mean and how we can use them. And we're going to do this with an example of data from two different populations and looking at if the means from those two sample populations are really different. Alright, so check out this example. You've got a wildlife manager in a canyon grassland environment. She wants to know if livestock grazing is affecting the cover of bitter brush within the area she manages. And so she goes out, she puts up 20 grazing exclosures and uh, looks at bitter brush cover inside the exclosures. That's the ungrazed area and then bitter brush cover outside of the exclosures also in 20, uh, 20 locations or plots. And she wants to know is the cover of bitter brush different between the grazed areas and the ungrazed areas. So here's the data that she collected from her 20 grazing exclosures and uh, cover data that she collected on the uh, grazed areas outside of the exclosures. And uh, we're going to consider these independent samples because she didn't do any kind of pairing of grazed and ungrazed plots. She just had the 20 exclosures, the 20 grazed areas uh, that were sort of picked at random. And if we calculate a mean for those, we can see that the, the mean cover in the grazing exclosures, that ungrazed area, was 34.4%, and the mean cover of sagebrush in the grazed area was 40.1%. So the question then that we need to ask is, are these means really different from each other? You know, 34.4 is a lower number than 40.1. Uh, are they actually meaningfully different based on the sample that we collected? One of the ways that we can tell whether two sample means are the same or if they're uh, considered different statistically is using confidence intervals. Now the technical definition of a confidence interval is it's a range of values defined such that there is a specified probability that the value of the population parameter lies within that range. You can see the formula for a confidence interval up here at the top. And uh, so we construct a confidence interval around a mean, that's this X bar value, or some sort of population estimate, or mostly the mean. And then it's, so it's the mean plus or minus, uh, in this case, the standard error times uh, a critical T value. Now there's different sort of formulas for confidence intervals, and different ways that you would calculate them depending on the, the, the type of data that you have and some other assumptions that you have to make. But generally this is, is a, pretty standard formula that it's a population estimate plus or minus some sort of calculated amount that's based on the variability of the data. Now that's a technical definition of a confidence interval, but let's talk about maybe some useful conceptual definitions. And so you can think of a confidence interval as a range of values that we're fairly sure that the true value lies within that range. Or a way to measure how well your sample is representing the overall population that you're studying or in our case, in the example that we're using with the bitter brush, it's the range within which uh, differences in a population estimate, like a mean, are not significantly different. And so let's explore this third uh, of these conceptual definitions. All right, so the first thing we want to do is break apart this definition or this formula for a confidence interval. So we're going to calculate confidence interval using a couple of building blocks. And the first of these is our sample mean or our x bar and that is the just the average of the data values for our grazed and our ungrazed areas the next thing that we need is the standard error of our sample and the standard error in this instance is just defined as like what's the variability of the samples that we collected and we're going to calculate that as the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size or how many plots we measured and in this case that would be 20. And then the other piece that we need is this critical T value. I'm going to talk about that in just a couple of slides but for the T value then we also need to know our confidence level or our type 1 error rate, our alpha, and we also need to know our degrees of freedom. So if we apply this to the data that we collected, to this bitter brush data, you can see that for the ungrazed areas, those are the exclosures, we calculated a mean of 34.4% uh, cover. We had a standard deviation of that of 14.13. That's just uh, characterizing or describing the variability in those samples. And then we calculate our standard error 
of 3.16 and uh, do that for the ungrazed and the grazed areas. You can see over here on the side the actual formulas that I used in Excel uh, in order to calculate this. If these formulas are not familiar to you or you're unsure about that, um, be a good idea to go and check out the Excel crash course video that I have that just goes through how to do all of these and then all of the formulas that you need to know for the class. So the last building block that we need in order to build our confidence interval is this critical T value. And uh, the T value comes from a standardized statistical distribution and it's really the cutoff point that relates to the probability that we would see more extreme results. I'm not going to get too deep into that right now. That's sort of the subject matter for a statistics course. And you get the T values either by looking them up in a, in a T table if you want to do it old school, or you can uh, use a uh, software application like Excel or a statistics package to actually get the exact T values for you. You need a couple pieces of information to get that T value. You need your alpha, which is uh, one minus your confidence level. And so if we want to be 90% confident, then that's 100% minus 90% gives you 10% or 0.1. That would be the alpha level that we're going to use in this case. And then we need the degrees of freedom. I'm not going to go into that either uh, at this point. Just know that for a simple confidence interval, that's your sample size minus one. So 20 minus one is 19. Uh, you can see here on the slide two, we use this T I N V T inverse function to look up the, the critical T values in Excel. All right, now that we've got all of our building blocks, let's go ahead and put our confidence intervals together. So we'll start with the ungrazed, with the grazing exclosures. And uh, we're going to build that with our, uh, our sample mean of 34.4. And then we're going to use our standard error, which is 3.16 times the critical T value that we got, which was 1.729. So our confidence interval is going to be 34.4 plus or minus 5.4636, or roughly 34.4 plus or minus 5.5, 5.5. .5. And then if we actually run the math on that, then we get a range from 28.9 to 39.9. And so what this means is we can be 90% confident that based off the data we collected that the actual value of bitter brush cover in these grazing exclosures is somewhere between 28.9 and 39.9. Okay, that's your confidence interval. If we run this through for the grazed area, same thing, we get a range of 37.0 to 43.2. So we're 90% confident that the actual population mean of uh, bitter brush cover is somewhere between 37 and 43.2. Now that we actually built that confidence interval from the building blocks, I do want to point out that there's a shortcut in Excel that uh, really makes life a little bit easier here. It's just doing all that math, but it's doing it for you. And it's a function called confidence.t. And you need to give it three things. You need your alpha level, so 0.1 in our case. You need your standard deviation, which we actually calculated for the ungrazed area, that's 14.13. And then you need your sample size, uh, which, is, which is 20. And if you feed all those in, you get the same values for your confidence interval width that we did when we did it from the building blocks, and then you just run the math and then add that to your mean and subtract that from your mean to get your actual confidence interval. So let's put these confidence intervals to use and see how they help us answer the question of whether the bitter brush cover was different from the grazed to ungrazed areas. And we can do that by plotting these things out on a number line. And so our ungrazed average bitter brush cover was 34.1 with a confidence interval of about 29 to about 40. And our grazed uh, bitter brush cover was 40.1 with a confidence interval from 37 to a little bit over 43. And you can see that these confidence intervals overlap each other. And our we used a 10% uh, confidence level or 90% confidence level here, so 10% error. So what this means is there's greater than 10% uh, chance that the um, actual values for both of these populations are within that overlap region. And so this would be evidence that there is not a significant difference between these two samples that we collected.
So we can take the same data, we can flip them around and put them into a bar chart, which is a, a visualization type that we might use more commonly than just number lines. And, and then we can use error bars on those uh, on the bar chart to actually communicate our confidence intervals. And you can see in this sort of pink shaded region that our confidence intervals are overlapping. And that's, again, evidence or suggestion that there is not a significant difference between these two populations, at least given the set of sample data that we collected. Now, if you return a result like this that suggests there's not a significant difference, then the first thing you need to ask yourself is whether or not you had enough data or the right data in order to answer the question in the first place. And if you feel pretty comfortable with that, then your conclusion here is that these two populations are not different. So you can see from this example, confidence intervals are a really pretty powerful way of, of looking at the data that we have and, and determining whether or not differences exist between populations. And conceptually, it's the same approach or the same idea that's being applied when we do statistical tests like t-tests or analysis of variance or other things. They're just doing it in a little bit more sophisticated manner than with confidence intervals. So that's it for confidence intervals. Now remember, confidence intervals tell us a couple of things. One is that they capture that variability in our samples and give us a range within which our true population value is expected to be. We can also use the confidence intervals, though, to look at whether the differences between two samples are likely significant or not. And if they overlap, then they're not significant. And there's really kind of four steps to calculating a confidence interval. First thing, we need to calculate that average, or that statistic for our population. Then we need the standard deviation or the, the calculation of variability around that and the sample size. And then we calculate the confidence interval widths. And then the final thing we do is take those widths and add them to our population estimate and subtract them from our population estimate to get that confidence interval 